But let's get started here, everybody. Main notes, ratios, and proportions. Let's go. So today, here's the thing. If you haven't been to my classes before, we got to understand this and this only. Learning math is like learning a language. And when it comes to learning specific ideas, whether it's distance, rate, time, percents, fraction, word problems, I don't care what it is. It doesn't matter. Every math idea has a, a main idea. And so we need to make sure that we understand the main idea of every topic. So yes or no, have you heard me say this before? When it comes to proportions, we need to make sure that we compare the same things in the same way. Who's heard me say that before? All right. So if you're new, check out the chat box. This is how we learn here. We learn in, a, in an intuitive way, in a way that doesn't you know, have you kind of restricted to memorizing things, but actually understand what you're looking at. Because it's not about getting one problem right. It's about knowing you can get the next one right. So we're going to basically talk about this in English so we can know what we're looking for and point things out and pick it apart. So here we go. Compare the same things in the same way. If there's anything that you will write down ever, there it is right there. And also shout out to Coach Sheena and our two interns, or one of our interns, Emma, who completely redesigned our uh, slides here. So this is all their work. So proportions, what are they? Well, right here, go ahead, take these notes down. But first, before you write them down, please listen to what I'm saying. Proportions pretty much is this, two fractions that are the same. That's it. It's just two fractions that are the same. You could literally say like that. That's a proportion. Two fractions that are equal to each other. That is literally it. That is literally it. But if you're thinking about this in a more, uh, I would say, technical way, a way that is going to make more sense as you continue practicing, you're going to want to know it this way. You need to know that proportions are the same parts of the same holes. So basically, remember this. Fractions are parts of holes. Everybody, yes or no? Fractions are parts of holes. Fractions are parts of holes, right? Kind of like pizza, right? I always talked about pizza in the past. And um, I can definitely do that example when we do the adding and subtracting fractions uh, lesson in a couple of weeks. But yeah, for sure. Fractions are parts out of holes. So think of it like this, everybody. Let me just zoom on in over here. Yes or no? One over two is the same thing as saying half or 50%, right? Right, cool. Yeah, sounds good. Not saying anything crazy, right? One out of two, that's 50%, that's half. Now, everybody, question is two half of four? Is two half of four? Right, two is half of four. So that's what I mean when I say comparing the same things in the same way. Look at that. One is half of two. The top is half of the bottom. Same thing over here. Two is half of four. Two is half of four. One is half of two. Everybody, yes or no? Are we starting to see how we are comparing the same things in the same way or saying that we have the same parts of the same holes? The top is half of the bottom. The top is half of the bottom. It's the same comparison the same way. I want to make sure we start kind of recognizing this in a slightly, uh, in a slightly intuitive way. Again, in just plain old English before we get into that nitty gritty stuff. But let's check it out here. Here's an example. This example here, there are six boys for every 10 girls in class. There are, if there are 35 girls in class, then there are 21 boys. So let's go ahead and kind of just show this example here and just kind of show you what's going on. So everybody, when it comes to proportions, do me a favor. Please go ahead and repeat this in the chat box. Compare the same things in the same way. You're going to thank me in a second. Compare the same things in the same way. Please go ahead, take a quick 10 seconds, type that into the chat box. Justin, appreciate it. Thank you, Alex, EC, Amina, Krista, Isaac. Uh, there we go, Mario, Key, Krishan. Now it's flooding in. Let's see for Carla, Kathleen, Jasmine, and I give up. All right, cool. Oh, David, gotcha. <laughs> appreciate it, guys. Appreciate it. You're going to thank me in a moment. Let's watch this sentence right over here. There are six boys for every 10 girls in class. Watch this. I'll just use 
blue for boys and uh, green for girls. Six boys for every 10 girls in class. And I can't even tell the difference, so I'll just use a circle here. Or I'll use regular, uh, regular pen. Six boys for every 10 girls, right there. So here's what we're gonna do, everybody. Six boys over 10 girls equals, and then let me go over here. If there are 35 girls in class, then there are 21 boys. Everybody watch this. If I were to write the 35 girls up here, because again, girls are the circle in green, and then boys are circle in blue. So notice this. If I were to put 35 girls up top, and then the 21 boys in the bottom, everybody, yes or no, are we comparing the same things in the same way? Are we comparing the same things in the same way? Go ahead, give your answer, be honest about it. It's all good, be honest about it. We're here to learn, we're here to learn. Give it your best go. Okay, cool. So thanks for being honest. So everybody, let's go ahead and break it down again. What did we say? We said compare the same things in the same way. So let's be technical here for a second. Everybody, first question, are we comparing the same things? We have boys and girls on this side. We have boys and girls on the other side as well. Right over here. We've got boys and girls on this side, boys and girls on that side. Are we comparing the same things? We are comparing the same things. Yes, we are comparing the same things, but we are not comparing them the same way. Think of it like this. We have boys being compared to girls up top to the bottom, but here boys goes up to girls right there. We are not comparing them in the same way. We are comparing the same things, but it's not in the same way. So this is your first lesson with proportions. This is your first lesson with proportions right here. You have to make sure that your setup compares the same things in the same way. So it's right here. Make sure that your setup, again, I'm not repeating myself for the sake of repeating myself, this is really the biggest important note of uh, proportions because once you have this idea down, you will never ever feel that anxiety with proportions once you have enough practice under your belt with this idea. So trust the process here, let's write this down. Make sure that your setup compares the same things in the same way. Compares the same things right there in the same ways. That's it. That is really it. And let me actually go ahead in the same way. That's really the most important thing that you could write down today. So now we're going to go ahead and understand this a little more here. We're going to go and understand this a little better here. The way that we should compare this, the way that we should compare this is by having the green or the representation for girls be on the bottom and the representation for boys top. That's what it should be. That's it. That is it right there, okay? Because that way we can now say that we are comparing the same things in the same way. So if anybody here is asking, why is it so important that we compare the same things in the same way? The reason is this. When you solve, if everything is in the correct place, the thing about math is this. You have an equation right here. Everybody, yes or no? An equation means that this side equals this side. Yes or no? An equation means that this equals that. So there you go. That's the, that's the only reason you need. If you don't compare the same things in the same way, then it's not an equation. It's not going to be correctly set up. And guess what happens, everybody? When you solve an equation the right way, that was set up the wrong way. What happens? What happens when you solve an equation the right way that was set up the wrong way? What always happens? What always happens? If it's set up the wrong way, you're gonna get the wrong answer, exactly. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Muhammad. That's right. 
if you, again, it doesn't matter how correctly you solve it. If you didn't set it up right, you're doomed. That's it. So that's why this is really important, guys. That's why this is, again, I can't move on without us really understanding this. So we went ahead and set this up here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at some ways to solve proportions. So I want to ask you an honest question. Everybody, um, who here, give me a yes or no, who here knows about the cross multiplication and division method? Yes or no? Who here knows about cross multiplying and dividing? Let's see. All right, the majority of us are saying yeah. I want to say like every four and five people here are saying yes, which is pretty accurate, pretty good. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and move over here. Who knows about the up, down, or vertical simplifying method where you compare the tops to the bottoms and the bottoms to the tops? Who knows about that method? It's, it's a nice little mental math method as well, but it also works very well when you have bigger numbers and you need to kind of simplify things for yourself. Hey, be honest. Be honest. It's okay to say no. Exactly. It's okay to say no. Be honest. All right, cool. So if you do know about the up down, you probably know about the left right or maybe not. But if you don't know about the up down, you definitely don't know about the left right. So one more question there, just an honest one. Yes or no to the left right. Right on. OK. All right, cool. So we're going to go ahead here and we're going to learn all three real quick because we're gonna refresh on the cross multiplication and division. We're gonna refresh on that. But what we're also gonna do is we're gonna make sure that you understand that again, math is not some step A, step B, step C, always kind of deal. It's really up to you as long as you understand the rules. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Hey, hey, quick pause here before you continue this session recording, which I'm really proud of you for sticking to and getting the information that you need. I wanna tell you about my ASVAB All Access program. This program is everything that my students need to raise their scores and get the jobs they want because it has all of my classes, every single one that I've ever done, organized for them. So you don't have to worry about coming to the live ones. You can actually watch whenever you need to. And on top of that, you can text me whenever you need help and get access to thousands of extra practice problems for the math, the English sections, general science, plus practice tests and study guides. So I'm making this program here everything that you'll ever need pass the test, and I update it periodically for free at no extra cost. So go ahead, check the link out in the description of this video, or shoot me a text, 567-698-8867. I'm Coach Anderson, and ask me about my ASVAB All Access program. That way you can raise your score, stress less, blank out less, less test anxiety, and get that job you deserve. So let's get back to the session recording, but let's make sure to do that and ace the ASVAB. We have ourselves three over nine, equals x over 18. So allow me to do this, please, and thank you. Allow me to go ahead and just repeat this real quick. One moment. Let me go ahead and convert this into math. And thank you. I'll place that right there. So everybody, go ahead. Let's follow along here. 3 over 9 equals x over 18. Let's go ahead and cross multiply and divide here real quick. So if we cross multiply and divide, let me go and write this up here. Let's go over this method real quick. So cross multiply and divide. Here we go. If we go ahead and take nine multiplied by x, everybody, what is nine multiplied by x going to give us? Help me out here. 9 multiplied by x will give you 9 times x, 9x. And then over here, we have 3 multiplied by 18, everybody. Who knows how to do that at the top of their head? OK, sounds good. And for those of us who didn't know how to do it mentally, we'll have 18 times uh, 3. We'll go ahead and have 8 times 3, which is 24. Write that right over there. Then we have one times three, which is three plus two is five. So we have 54 right there. So you have nine X equals 54. Now here's what happens next. What happens next is that we're gonna go ahead now and take a look at this equation here. And we'll ask ourselves, well, nine times X is 54. We have to work backwards here to solve this. So if we have 
times nine with the X, we're gonna do the opposite and do what everybody? Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Tori. Appreciate y'all. Thank you, Julio. Yeah, divide both sides by nine. So by doing that to both sides, nice and easy, that's gonna cancel out. Cause again, multiply by nine, divide by nine, cancels out. And we're gonna leave ourselves with X equals six. Booyah, right there, right? So yes or no, who feels pretty proud of this? Who feels like, okay, cool, cross multiplying and dividing, we're feeling pretty good about that. This is a solid strategy. This will work out for us pretty well, right? Right, feels pretty good, feels pretty good. Can't complain, right? So everybody, a uh, question, yes or no, on the ASVAB, are you timed? Are you timed? Just a nice rhetorical question there. Yes, you are. So everybody, what's gonna happen when you have some crazy funky numbers like instead of three, nine, X and 18, you got something like, hmm, let's go ahead and say 27 and uh, let's go ahead and say 121 equals something to, along the lines of 76 over X. Are you going to enjoy doing that kind of math? No, you're not going to enjoy it. So this is why this is important. This is why it's important to understand how to do things more than one way, because it's going to help you generate ideas and generate confidence when you're working. So allow me to go ahead and take this here. Um, and before we do, let me go ahead and actually copy it. So I'm going to paste it over here and show you the third way in a couple of moments. But watch this, everybody. Do me a favor, go ahead and type out the main idea for proportions. What was the main idea for proportions that I told you to write down earlier? Type it out one more time in the chat box. No, I'm not being annoying. I'm telling you this main idea is your, basically your proportion Bible, if you wanna go ahead and call it that, okay? Compare the same things in the same way. Yep, that is it. I'll go ahead and wait for about 40 people to do it since we have 140 people here. I'll go ahead and wait for about 40. Compare the same things in the same way. Go ahead, type that out. Appreciate y'all so much. Cause I'm telling you, those of you that are being conscious here and typing this out, you're gonna get so much more out of this, man. I'm excited for y'all. All right, still waiting on about 12 more there. Keep it going, appreciate y'all. Compare the same things in the same way. Good, good, good. Just a few more, waiting about six of y'all. Trust me, I'll wait. I can wait. I am good. I'm gonna, my job is to make sure that you come out of this on top, making sure that you're confident about this. And I'm not going to move on when it comes to a moment where we shouldn't be skipping. So I got y'all. Appreciate y'all. There's 40. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So compare the same things in the same way. Everybody, if I compare the 3 to the X, does that not mean that we should compare the nine to the 18. Is that comparing in the same way? From the left side to the right side, the left side to the right side, is that comparing in the same way? Yeah, that is exactly it. That is exactly it. You are comparing the same things in the same way if you're going in the same direction. Same start point, same end point. Same start point, same end point. We're good. But here's my curious question here. Everybody, what do you do to nine to get to 18. What do you multiply or divide by? Because that's how ratios work, multiplication or division. How do you get from nine to 18? Give me specifics, not just a two, give me an operation, give me an operation. Don't get lazy. Multiply by two, right? Multiply by two. So everybody, watch this. Compare the same things in the same way. Nine times two equals 18. That's a fact. If you compare the same things in the same way, three times two equals six, and you're done. And that's it. Yes or no, did that make sense? <laughs> what? <laughs> no freaking way, yes, cool, I'm glad that it makes sense, guys. But that's one way to look at it. Again, that is, again, this is the horizontal left-right approach. That's it. Like, again, this is the, the approach, the idea of comparing the same things in the same way. That's all it is. This is comparing the same things in the same way. It does cut so much time, doesn't it? Look at this. In this previous problem, or in the same, the same problem, just a different solution, we cross multiply just like we learned in high school. We did all that good stuff, and there we are. 
when it comes to proportions, you can compare the same things in the same way, horizontally or horizontally, vertically, however you want, really, however you want. Now, let me go ahead and show you the vertical method and really kind of just finish off blowing your mind here. So here, the vertical method, everybody, true or false? If I knew that I can go from bottom to top over here, that means I could go from bottom to top over here. And question everybody, you know, I'm trying to get to X, I'm trying to find out what that little secret code is. But hey, guys, isn't it clear that we can go from nine to three, right? We can go from nine to three, right? How do we go from nine to three? Using multiplication and division, give me a full statement here. How do we go from nine to three? And notice the direction matters. The direction matters. I'm trying to get to X. So let me find the way to get to the three. Once I know how to get there, then I know how to go from here to here. That's the puzzle. That's how proportions work. And I love how you're all saying we are dividing by three to get there. And that is true. Everybody nine divided by three is three. That is true. Everybody, what is 18 divided by three? What's that going to give us? Oh, what? Huh? X equals six. Now, come on, guys. You're telling me that I'm making a lot of sense right now. Come on now. What's going on here? I thought it was only two ways. No, this is definitely a cheat code in math. It's only a cheat code because, again, it takes that fundamental understanding, the main idea. Compare the same things in the same way. If you follow that rule for proportions, then you can go from starting to solve proportions with cross multiplication and division, which, again, you still will use this every now and then. I'm not saying that this method sucks. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that if you if you notice conveniences, you should take advantage of horizontal or vertical uh, simplification. So basically up, down, or side to side method. That's pretty much all you want to call it. Up, down, or side to side, doesn't really matter. But that's the idea, everybody. So on a scale of one to 10, how much sense did that make for you? And if you need more practice to be able to understand it at all, then go ahead and say you need more practice. It's all good. But on a scale of one to 10, how much sense did that make? Yeah, we'll definitely get more examples. We'll definitely get more examples. You know, we're starting here and now we're going to learn how to set up proportions with these word problems. But then after that, we're going to get into a lot more practice and drill sets too to really make this happen. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, practice is absolutely necessary. So don't worry. I got you. There's plenty of that. So let's go ahead and take a look at some word problems here, everybody. I'm going to give you five more seconds here to take a screenshot. Four, three, two, Cool. Hopefully I made your screenshot special. So next, here we go. Guided warm up part to part. So that was the last week, Krista. Um, it was the horizontal left to right and the vertical up down. I showed all three. Um, so here we go. Guided warm up here, my party people. So this is an example of a part to part proportion. So let's go ahead and take a look here. And now, again, don't worry about the word problem strategy for a moment. Don't worry about it for a moment. But Jill bought eight shirts for $520. How much would she need to pay for 10 shirts at the same rate? So everybody, yes or no? Look, um, let's be honest here. This is a class on proportions. You're sitting here. You know this is a proportion problem, right? You know it's a proportion problem. But let me ask you for an honest question. Let me ask you an honest question. Can you prove to me that this is a proportion problem? Yes or no? Who here can prove to me that this is a proportion problem? Now, can you point out the evidence in the word problem? Can you say this, this, and that tells you that it's a proportion word problem? Who here would like to grab the mic there and try that out? Go ahead, Jalen. Jalen, you're up first. Muhammad's back up. Go ahead. Oh, what's up? So... So this is eight shirts for five hundred twenty dollars, right? So, so there's already eight shirts, and then there's already ten shirts. So you're just already comparing that. So it'd be eight on one side and then ten on the other side, and then five twenty on the bottom, and then the same rate, the X will be on the bottom right. I like it. So I completely understood what you said. 
But just to make sure that everybody understood what you said, um, go ahead and say that one more time in terms of the two things that you saw being compared. Oh, I'm going to go and give you the mic again. Go ahead. Oh, what was your question? My bad. Yeah, my question was, so it was clear to me what you were saying, clear to me. But I just okay. want you to reiterate what the comparison was. In the, the shirts process. and the money. Right. Shirts for this much money. Shirts for how much money? Everybody, yes or no, do you see that we're comparing the same things in the same way here? We're asking, hey, we got this many shirts for this much money. We want this many shirts, but we don't know how much money. But we're, we're going to find it. That's part of the problem. But do you see the comparison? Shirts to money. Shirts to money. This is how you can, this is how you can prove any problem that is a proportion problem as a proportion problem. When you're comparing things in one sentence and you're comparing things in another sentence, the same things, but like a different scenario, that's how you know you have a proportion. That's how you know. So with that said, let's go ahead and, and really just work to set this up. So here's how we're gonna set this up. First, everybody, what are we looking for? Are we looking for money, shirts? What are we looking for? Yeah, we're looking for money right over here, gang. It says right here. How much would she need to pay? So we here are looking for money. So again, I'm going to write this here. Blank dollars. For how many shirts, everybody? We're looking for the amount of money for how many shirts? Not eight, for 10 shirts. Look at the sentence here. How much would she need to pay for 10 shirts at the same rate? So right there. Next, let's go ahead and take down the other piece of information here to really make sure that we're setting things up the right way for ourselves. So here it says, Jill bought eight shirts for $520. So everybody, this is good, right? Eight shirts for $520. Everybody, we've wrote down our notes. Do we have enough information to set up our proportion? Yes or no? We do, we do. Um, and let's just go ahead and give it a, a letter here. If we're gonna make a proportion, right? We can't just leave it a blank. So everybody, uh, we're looking for blank dollars for 10 shirts. Give me a variable that I can put in there. X, yeah, I mean, X works, always works. You know, M for money. If you wanna give it something that makes sense according to the problem, that's always great. Um, it does add on a little bit of interest to the problem. That way you can actually remember what you're solving for. So I'll go ahead and just write, use M for money. If you're gonna use X, totally fine. My preference is that you use letters that make sense in terms of what you're talking about. That way you remember a little easier as you go along. But that's neither here nor there. Let's go ahead and make sure that this happens here. So I'm gonna go ahead and compare the same things in the same way. I see that I wrote it as M to 10 and eight to 520. So I'm gonna do that right over here. M to 10 and eight to 520. Everybody, that's a good setup, right? Yes or no? Come on. That's a good setup. Come on. That's a good setup. I compared the same things in the same way. What are you guys talking about? I did from here to there, there to there. I compared the same thing. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, Muhammad, you want to raise your hand and explain what just happened here? What just happened here? So, Muhammad, go ahead. Talk to us about what my mistake was setting this up. So, we need to compare same thing in the same way. Absolutely. You cannot compare money to shirt. You got to compare money to money and shirt to shirt. Exactly. Here we have money. And then here we have shirts. Yes, I'm going to take my time and do that. But then what do we have over here? This over have, here. Over there, you have shirt to money. Exactly. Here we have shirts to money. So everybody, do you notice how I compared what I wrote in the same way? I didn't actually compare the, the actual problem, the, you know, the, the ideas of the problem in the same way. Has anybody ever made that mistake before? 
they wrote their information down in that way and they set up their proportion wrong and they were like, wow. And we've all made that mistake. If you haven't, well, maybe that you're a little prone to forgetting that you are not perfect, but it's okay. It's okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take care of this the right way here. So we have to make sure that, you know, when you're taking your notes down for the problem, it's a good idea that if you know it's a proportion problem, make sure that you write it down comparing in the same way. That way you don't get confused in that way. So all I would do, it's a simple fix, simple fix. All I would do here is just take this eight shirts, move that over here, right there. Now, since I color coordinated it, right, it does look like, okay, cool, a little prettier, but you see that the color coordination is there. Money for shirts, money for shirts. And so compare the same things in the same way. Boom. So I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to do that. And there you go. So now, everybody, is this setup correct? Yeah. We're comparing the money to shirts in the same way. So with that said, let's go ahead and talk about potentially solving this thing. So we, we set it up the right way. Nancy, appreciate you. So we, we've gone ahead and set this up the right way here. Now let's go ahead and solve. Everybody, do you see an avenue for a shortcut here? Yes or no? Do you see an avenue for a shortcut? You know, it, it's a yes or no. You know, if you don't see it right away, it's okay. It takes a little bit of practice here because I'm going to show you the, the next level to that left, right, or up, down method. I'm going to show you the next level to that. But let's go ahead and say that we're looking at this problem on a practice test, which these types of numbers are often huge. Tens, eights, numbers and ending zeros. That's typically... If you're looking at arithmetic reasoning on the passing side, you're typically going to get dealt these kinds of numbers, which is pretty nice. So watch this. Let's solve this the regular way. Let's go ahead and use cross multiplication and division. And I'm going to show you how we can actually tweak the other methods to still get it done faster. So let's go ahead and do this here, everybody. Cross multiply. Everybody, what is M times 8 going to be? Hit me. What is M times 8 going to be? 8 M sounds great. And then everybody, what's 520 times 10? What's that going to be? Add a zero. Exactly. When we're multiplying by 10, just add a zero. That's going to be 5,200. Now, watch this, everybody. Watch this right here. Next up, last step is just going to be to divide 8 on both sides, correct? Last step, just divide by 8 on both sides. Sounds great. Now look at the predicament that we got ourselves into. This isn't anything bad, right? We're still gonna solve this, but I just wanna show you how much time something like this might spend. So right here, the eights cancel out, and now we have M equals whatever the heck that is. And now we're stuck going ahead and setting up long division, and we're sitting here like, oh, Pappy, this is gonna take forever. So eight goes into five, zero times. Eight goes into 52. How many times? <laughs> How many times does eight go into 52? That's going to be, is it five? Is it six? Right? You got to actually think about that kind of stuff. Well, eight goes into 52 six times. Subtract 48. All right. Sounds good. 52 minus 48. That's going to go ahead and be four. And now when we're taking a look here, we got to drop that zero. Everybody, eight goes into 40. How many times? Right, that's going to be five times. Sounds good. And then we keep doing our work here. We subtract that 40. And now we got zero. Everybody, how many times does uh, eight go into zero? How many times is that? That's going to be zero. So our answer here is going to be 650. 650 what? 650 what? M was for money. So that's going to be $650. And there we have it. So is anybody here mad at that method? Like, you know, are we, are we okay or are we appreciative that we were at least able to get a solution here? Are we good on that? Hey, right on, getting that right. Good stuff. I don't like it. It took too long. It took too long. I'm getting anxious with how long it took. Easy money. I need help with long division. Definitely write that down. If you need help with long division, write that down. 
this is going to be up to you. I mean, I have resources in my program to help you out with that. But if you're not using my program, make sure you're self-sufficient. Make sure you write down what you know you need to work on and find out how you can work on it. Um, but again, you know, if you want to learn more about my program, I will talk about that more at the end of class. I got y'all. But there it is, everybody. There it is. That is one way to do it. Allow me to invite you to see how you can do it just a little faster. Watch this. So I'm going to do the same setup. The M over 10 equals the 520 over 8. I'm going to do the same exact setup. Everybody, let's go ahead and, and really just start understanding like how much easier this can be when we know how math works. So question, my first question. We have a 520 divided by eight. Everybody, could you simplify that fraction? Could you simplify that fraction? You could, you could. Everybody, 520 and eight, they're both even. So if two numbers are even, what do you know that they're both divisible by? What do you know that they're both divisible by? Like, you don't have to know that 520 is divisible by four. It is. It is divisible by eight as well. But you don't have to know that. You just have to know the basic rules here. A two. They're both divisible by two. So let's go ahead and do that. Watch this, everybody. Look how much easier this gets for you if you just do a little bit of simplifying. Everybody, 520 divided by two. Let me use a different color here to be consistent. 520 divided by two is what, everybody? What is 520 divided by two? And you can think about it as 52 divided by two. It is not 212. It looks like some of y'all are just repeating what someone else is typing. Yeah, it's 260, 260. Think about it. 52 divided by two is 26. So 520 divided by two would be 260. So in that sense, in that sense, what we would have here is 260 over four. Again, that's 260 and that is four. We can actually go ahead and try that out one more time, everybody. We have 260 and we have four. What are 260 and four both divisible by? They're still both divisible by two. Again, it's still divisible by four. I know that some of us here may know that, but let's pretend that we're like live in the moment and we're just trying to simplify a little bit. Watch this. I'm, this is not going to take forever. I'm just showing you the steps and kind of taking my time showing you the steps. But when you do it in real time, this can be really, really fast. Divide by two again. Because often this is going to happen in your head. Everybody, what's 260 divided by two? What's that going to give us? That's 130. That's a little more understandable, right? For sure. For sure. And then lastly, watch this, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and just have a little moment. Because everybody, look at this. If I wanted to go from 130 to M, wouldn't that be the same thing as going from 2 to 10? Wouldn't, wouldn't that be the same thing? It opened up, right? It opened up for us. And if you ask me how you know that it would open up, I just noticed right here. If I knew how to go from 8 to 10, I could tell you exactly how to go from here to there. But what I did was, yo, I know I could divide that by 2 and maybe even a 2 again. For sure, I know I could do that. So that's what I ended up doing. I end up here and look at this. I know that all I got to do now is go from two to 10, from right to left. That's multiplying by five. To go from 130 to M, that's multiplying by five. And I'm perfectly allowed to do this. 130 times five, one time. Zero times five is zero. Three times five is 15. And one times five is five plus one is six. Boom. And we get 650. Now, if you're saying, hey, that's longer, 
let's go ahead and see what the operations were that we just did, everybody. Watch this. Let's just compare. Let's compare. What do we do over here? Oh, and if you're asking where I got the five from, I'm going to show you right now. What's two times what gives you 10? Two times what gives you 10? Five. You're comparing the same things in the same way. That's the idea with proportions. That's the idea with proportions. So compare the same things in the same way. Two times five does give you 10. And since you have to compare the same things in the same way, 130 times five is going to give you the answer. It's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. Cool. I'm glad you see it there. Appreciate that. So let me just remind you again. What did we do? Okay, we divided by two. We divided by two. Then we multiplied by five. Everybody, is multiply or is dividing by two, then dividing by two, then multiplying by five? Is that hard or easy, relatively speaking? Dividing by a two, then dividing by a two, then dividing by five, or, or multiplying by five. Is that easy, medium, or hard for you doing those operations? Okay, for the most of us, I see a lot, big majority of us saying, yeah, it's relatively easier, relatively easier. Okay, let's go ahead and just compare that to what we saw over here. Okay, so we went ahead at first, we multiplied 520 by 10 and the 8n. So technically two operations. Then we went ahead and divided 5200 by eight. Everybody, what is easier in your eyes? Dividing by two, dividing by two times five, or dividing 5,200 by eight. Right, I think we can agree here that we can take a few smaller steps faster than we can take one big one. I'm telling you right now, this right here, steps one, two, and over here, this happened in my head. Then the last part, the third, 130 times five, then you actually have to maybe write that down and that's okay. But you should know how to do 520 divided by two. If you're practicing properly for the ASVAB, you should be able to tackle that without much trouble at all. So I just want to make sure that I'm being real with y'all in terms of, you know, this is not some sort of like, oh, Houdini show that we're just trying to go ahead and just show up. Like, no, this is about finding ways to take less time on the same problems. Because ultimately, you're competing against the person next to you. So you got to make sure you are faster and more decisive than they are but also more confident. So if you want to learn more about mental math, obviously I've got plenty of videos on YouTube, check them out. And if you're in the program, just text me. I'll go ahead and send you more videos. All right. So with that said, on a scale of one to 10, how much sense did any of those methods uh, make sense? So either just across multiplication and division, the setup itself, doing all of this over here. Yep. Take a picture if you need to. I got you. Take your picture if you need to. There you go. Cool. And we're going to get plenty more practice, guys. Don't even worry about it. We're going to get plenty, plenty, plenty more practice. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at this next guided warm-up. I want to give you all a good, uh, let's say a minute here. So let me go ahead and actually set up the timer. I'm going to set up a timer for about a minute. All right, there's that. And what I want you to do in this minute is really just set the problem up. That's really what it's going to be. So there's your timer. I don't care if you get the answer or not. I just want you to set this up, okay? Just go ahead and set it up. You're good. Hey, hey, hope you're enjoying the session of recording so far. So as always, if you're looking for extra ASVAB help and support from a coach to kind of guide you through the process, study planning, and all the materials you need, just shoot me a text real quick. Again, I'm Coach Anderson, 567-698-8867. Go ahead and ask me about my all-access program or just ask me about the program in general. I'll be more than happy to tell you about it so you know that you can stress less and raise your score with ease. Again, I'm Coach Anderson. That's Ace the ASVAB. Text me now, and then let's keep going. All right, let's go ahead um, and type in your setup. I don't care about your answer right now. Type in your setup because you're going to see that we're going to have a few different setups that could still be correct. There's about six different setups you can have here because as long as you're comparing the same things in the same way, you'll still have it correct. So go ahead and type those in.
All right, so let's see here. Yeah, G over 20 equals 105 over 3. 108 over 3 equals 20 over G. So we have a few different ones here, a few different setups. All right, right on, right on. All right, so let's check this out here. Perfect. So let's go. Setting this up. So first things first, let's go ahead and understand the question. So now let's start getting into the strategy here. So here we see how many graham crackers will he need to build 20 gingerbread houses? So let's go ahead and type this here. How many graham crackers will he need to build 20 gingerbread houses? And that should be an S there, houses, and then a question mark, but there we have it. So here we want blank graham crackers. Come on, there you go. Crackers, four, and then we'll write 20 gingerbread houses. So let me just go ahead and move this over here. 20 houses. Houses. Uh, yeah, I know it's chicken scratch. Leave me alone. All right, so there we have it. Now, let's go ahead and take down the information from the previous uh, sentence there. Look at this. It says, hey, uh, Winter Bottom the Elf built three gingerbread houses using 105 graham crackers. Okay, cool. So everybody, what color should we highlight three gingerbread houses? If we're going ahead and taking down this information, what color should we use here? Again, compare the same things in the same way. Do your thing. I've used blue and red. What did I use blue for? What did I use red for? Just kind of, you know, pay attention there. What, what, what should I highlight it with? A lot of us are saying red. Let's see if that's true. Red, 20 gingerbread houses. So then if that's gingerbread houses, then yeah, let's compare the same things in the same way. Let's just be practical, right? Yeah, let's be practical. And then in blue over here, 105 graham crackers. Okay, so we have 105 graham crackers right over here. Four the three gingerbread houses, gingerbread houses. All right, so what we're gonna do now, everybody, can we confirm that this is a proportion? Are we comparing the same things in the same way here? Can we confirm that this is a proportion? Oh yeah, for sure. This is absolutely a proportion. We see that we absolutely are comparing the same things in the same way. This works, we're good. We're good. So now I'm going to set things up. Everybody quick, give me a letter for graham crackers. If you use G, think about gingerbread. So you might want to use G. We might want to use C for crackers. Exactly. Might want to use C for crackers or X, just to make sure you're not confusing yourself in the long run. But long story short, here are all of the different setups that you could have. All of these setups would work. C over 20 equals 105 over 3. That works. Also, here's another one that works. C over 105 equals 20 over 3. That works as well. Another setup that would work would be you could have something like this. 105 over C equals 3 over 20. That also works. And lastly, we have another one that could work. We could have it's really the same thing. I mean, we could have three over 105. Let me get my big old head out of the way. 20 over C. All of these setups would work. Let me get my big old head out of the way. Everybody, just write this down for a moment. All of these work. Let me take my timer out and take a picture of this if you'd like to, because I really want to just emphasize the idea that you can have more than one setup of proportions. All of these work. All of these work. So please go ahead and take a picture of these. You know, all of these work. Yes or no, do you see your setup on the screen here? Cool. All of these work for sure. All of these work. Because look, you could say, hey, C, that's the graham crackers. And then over here, 20 is the 20 gingerbread houses. And if you look over here, 105 crackers, three gingerbread houses. 
being compared in the same way. We also have C graham crackers compared to 20 gingerbread houses over there. Left to right, we have the same deal. 105 graham crackers to three gingerbread houses compared the same way. And you can do the same things over here. Again, you can compare them anyway. Doesn't matter which one, no. They all work out just the same. You solve it, you got it. It's nice and easy. You solve it and you got it. So with that said, everybody, all we're gonna do here, we can cross multiply and divide. We can do our cross, you know, our simplifications, but I'm gonna skip that for this problem specifically so we can get to these other word problems. The answer here, just gonna do the math. Basically what we're gonna have here is three to 105. That's a comparison of, I think that's gonna be 35. So that's gonna be one to 35. So that means that one to 20 means times 20. 35 times 20 is 700. So C is the, or B is the answer. Right there, it's gonna be 700 graham crackers. So that was mental math. Um, again, it doesn't take a lot of effort to get to where I am. It does take consistency, but it doesn't take a lot. It's not very hard. It just takes consistency and effort. Like not real, like, it's not challenging to the mind. You just have to practice. You just gotta practice, you just gotta practice. So there it is. So, boom. Um, I'll show you the program, Natalia. <laughs> so I'll talk about the program more about in, in, the, in, the, in the future here. So everybody, this is, this is where, this is where you're gonna wanna really pay attention because if you're trying to shoot for not just a passing score, if you want like that 45 and above, this is a kind of problem, a setup that you're gonna wanna know. So I'm going to warn you already, guided warm-up, this is a part two total, right here, right there. I am not hiding it. I am telling you what this problem is. So <clears throat> get ready for something different, okay? So first question is this. Read the question first. Everybody, what are we looking for in this problem? Take a look here. What are we looking for in this problem? Okay, cool. We're looking for how many of them are boys, right? How many of them are boys? So we're looking for blank boys. And everybody, in that sentence, what other piece of information are we given? In that same exact sentence that we found, oh, we're looking for boys, what are we given? What else are we given? If there are blank what, like, what did they say? If there are 3,500 total L's, right? Exactly. So I'm gonna go ahead and use, uh, let's use purple for total. There are 3,500 total L's. Let's write that down. Out of 3,500 total L's. Sounds good. Pay attention here. Just pay attention here. We're looking for the number of boys, and we were given 3,500 total L's. Okay, sounds good. So the first sentence here, this is where a lot of people, this is where confidence meets the whole feeling of hoping and wishing. Watch this. I'm going to prove a point here. So I'm going to look at this, and it says, there are 22, there are 22 boy L's to every... And then it says 28 girl elves. So here's what a lot of people would do. What a lot of people would do is they would write 22 boys. And then we'll say to, and then we say 28 girls. 28 girl elves, which is fair, right? You're going to write down the information. You're going to write down the information that you see. That's your job, right? That's what you're trying to do. But Everybody, who here would be tempted or might even go with this? Who would say that, okay, I'm going to use B for boys, and I'm going to set it up like this. I'm going to set up B over 3,500 equals 22 over 28. Who here would dare to do that? Who here would say, hey, I see that we have B to 3,500, 22 to 28. Who here would be tempted? Be, be honest. Who would be tempted to write it that way? and hope that they will get the right answer. Would anybody here be tempted? Again, I'm telling you that this is incorrect. This is wrong. I'm just asking you for your honest take. Would you have been tempted to try to set it up that way 
and hope that it works. Me, because I did. <laughs> yeah, I tried to sell it before, I went over it. And that's fair, right? That is fair. That's fair. At first, yeah. I used to before I joined your program, right? That's going to happen. So let me go ahead and really explain this. What's up, Muhammad? So let's go ahead and explain this here. The reason that this is incorrect is because the simple reason being, everybody fill in the blank, we are not what? Exactly, Jalen. Thank you. Jalen, raise your hand. Say it louder for the people in the back. Raise your hand, please, Jalen. Why is this wrong automatically? It's not comparing the same thing. We're not comparing the same things. Definitely not in the same way, right? Not happening. Everybody, think, think of it like this. B is for boys, and 22 is also for boys. So we can confirm that right there. We're good. That makes sense. That makes sense. But here's where the problem is. Everybody, the 3,500 represents total. Everybody, the 28 represents what? The 28 represents what? Girls. Girls. And so here, red, everybody, just take a look. Is that comparing the same things in the same way? Blue to purple, blue to red. Is that comparing the same things in the same way? No. No, it is not. No, it is not. So I, I, I guess it's fair to say that this begs the question, if this is the wrong way, then what's the right way? Who's wondering that right now? If this is wrong, then how do we do it the right way? Who is wondering that question right now? And here's the great thing about math, everybody. Math is a language. Math is a language. If you know how the language works, you're good. And a lot of the times, math and English blend in perfectly. Want to know what I mean? Watch this. Everybody, if we're looking at 3,500 total elves, everybody, how do we get to that 3,500 total? What does total mean again? What does that mean? I don't know. What does total mean again? Add, right? And so if we're saying total elves, to get the total number of elves, well, what categorization of elves are we adding together? I saw, uh, what, how do we get to that total? What are we adding? Right, in this problem itself, in this scenario, we are adding the boy elves and the girl elves, and that gives us a total of 3,500. So if we are going to compare the same things in the same way, for this situation right over here, well, then we have to think about it that way too. Everybody, we need total here. Down here, we need the total. So I'm gonna erase this. We need the total here. So help me out, my party people, help me out. If we have 22 boy elves to every 28 girl elves right over here, if we have 22 boy elves, to every 28 girl elves, what's the total number of elves in that scenario, in that comparison? Ah, there it is. 22 plus 28, that's gonna give us the 50. 22 plus the 28, that's what's gonna give us the 50. That right there, 50 total. Everybody, before I continue, does that make sense? Again, the way that we got the 50 was by adding the boys and the girls together to get the total. That's how we got there. And we noticed that in this scenario, we have 22 boys to every 28 girls. 22 plus 28 gives us the 50. And so we should be placing a 50 right here. We should be placing a 50 right there. And so now we're comparing boys to total. Now we can be certain that the problem is set up the right way. That's how this works, everybody. This is how we can be absolutely sure before moving on. You know, remember, a lot of the times, it's not about being able to calculate it. It's about being able to set it up. So if you, again, if you solve a problem or solve an equation the right way that was set up the wrong way, it's going to be wrong no matter what. So we have to know how to set this up. So one more time, I want to get a quick total check here. Yes or no, does the setup make sense? 
it should be 50, not 28, because we need the total, not gross. All right, so I'll take the question here. So before I solve this, we are going to solve this in a second, but Isaac, I want to take your question there, boss. Go ahead. What's your question, man? Uh, so I don't know. I guess the way I set it up, it's like so confusing. Like it's it, this goes back to like the previous problem. Yeah. So how did you set it up? Give it to me. All right. So <laughs> honestly, I don't know what the heck I did. So the previous problem that we did, I did x over three and then 105 over 20 and that's what i did that was a previous problem though but anyway this problem i set up um yeah the exactly the way that i wasn't supposed to set it up <laughs> <laughs> so you so you did the the b over 3500 yeah, yeah. But how did you how did you how did you come to like your conclusion on how to set it up that's the other part where i get stuck Oh, yeah, so that's the idea. So you got to compare the same things in the same way. Like that, that is, I'm going to echo that a million times over, but let me just support that a little more with you here. I got you. Let me support right. that a little more. So when you compare the same things in the same way, and here's a tip for proportion problems. When it comes to proportion problems, you will always base your setup off of the question. You base your setup off of the question. Here's what I mean by that. Let me let this person in here. You're going to base your setup off of the question. So here's your question. If there are 3,500 total L's, how many of them are boys? So what I'm doing here, Isaac, is I said, okay, the question is giving me 3,500 total compared to boys. So that's what I'm going to base my setup off of right here. So my job now, Isaac, is to have boys to total on this side as well. Earlier, we had a 28, we had 22 to 28, but that was boys to girls. So that tells me that we have to adjust this right here to get total, not girls. So Isaac, does that make a little more sense there? Let me give you that mic back, boss. Does that make a little more sense there in terms of why we made that decision? Yeah, now, now it's starting to make a little more sense. Can't say I'll remember it in the next 10 minutes, but hey, it's making sense. No worries. Yeah. So, you know, once you turn your mic off, kind of just talk to talk yourself through it again. Again, the reason that we couldn't have girls there was because it wouldn't have been compared the same way. It would have been boys to total, boys to girls. It needs to be boys total, boys total. And so that's why we had to use the total of this situation, not the girls of this situation. So kind of talk yourself through that and, and really make that, you know, uh, follow up with that for yourself, for sure. All right, cool. Gotcha, man. What's going on? Dwight, welcome in, my man. How can we help? So where, first, what you understand, and then where did you get stuck? Let's see if we can help you out here. Yeah, um, good evening, coach. How is everything? I'm doing well, man. Thanks. Yeah, um, the thing is, it I messed up, and I kind of, like, feel lost, because I'm going to put 22 over 35, and I put equal 28. That's what I equal 28. That's what, that's what I did. Yeah, 22 over 3,500 equal 28. That's what I did. It was just 28? Like that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that wouldn't that's be a proportion in this sense. This would not be a proportion. I remember a proportion, you're comparing two fractions here. And so you're going to have to have something like this equal something like that. So they're basically like something like this. Just don't worry about the letters here. They're just placeholders. But you have to have two fractions here. You got to have two fractions. All right, one here and one there. The number, the, the letters are just for numbers, okay? It could be 5, 10, 25, doesn't matter. But this is how proportions should be set up. And so you want to make sure that you are comparing the same things in the same way like we're doing here. You see how we're doing voice to total? Voice to total? Yeah. That's how we have to compare it. Every problem, every time, every time. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Yeah, we'll go and try the next one here. So go ahead and pay close attention to how I set it up. That's what I want you to pay very, very close attention to. So um, moving forward here, we're going to take a question from Jalen, then Jordan, then Muhammad, and then we are moving forward here. So go ahead, Jalen, if you still got a question there. Going once, going twice. 
All right, go ahead, Jose. What's going on, man? What's your question? Oh, no, you answered it already, but thank you, though, because I was going to ask you, like, but we already got to it. Hey, hey, if you'd like to watch all the classes, get all my practice problems, and text me whenever you need help with anything at all, then check out my ASVAB All Access program. It's everything you need to succeed. It's how my students raise their scores and get the jobs they want all day, every day. Oh, yeah, and by the way, I got a master's degree in teaching, and I've been teaching for over 10 years. I put you first. I'm passionate about it. So check this out, and let's get to work. Let's ace the ASVAB. So here, practice time, three minutes per question here. We're going to take three minutes here because I'm going to give you two minutes to try to set it up and then the final minute, hopefully, to try to solve it. Now, um, I'm going to be very real with you. You got to make sure you know what you're solving for. So really, when it comes to those part-to-part -part problems and part-to-totals, it doesn't matter if you see it at first because if you set the proportion up, and you know what you're comparing, it's gonna be obvious if you have a total problem or a part-to-part -part problem. You just have to make sure you write down what you're comparing, because if you don't, you're not gonna be in a good position to really solve it. So again, we're gonna have three minutes to solve each question. Let me get the timer ready for y'all. I'm gonna give you three total minutes. Hopefully that's more than enough time, but here you go, here's the timer. And starting three, two, and one. Let's try it out here. <laughs> if you finish with the problem early, go ahead and give Andrew a congratulations in the chat box because Andrew crushed it as well. He was on Friday's post on my Instagram, on Facebook. Andrew crushed it. Yeah, man, you deserve it. Gonna miss our conversations, man. Be like Muhammad, just stay in class. So I'm going to start dropping some hints here. It's, it's a minute into the problem. So I'm assuming those who do know how to do this are a little more ahead. For those of us that are stuck, follow along with me. I got you. Remember, everybody, first that, let's read the question. The question says, how many words? Right there, how many words? That's what we're looking for, the number of words. And then Tony types in 20 minutes. So how many words? In 20 minutes. Okay, everybody, try that out right here. We see that it says, how many words? can Tony type in 20 minutes? So if it's fair to you, we can say W words. I'm just using W because I don't know the number. I don't care what the number is. W words in 20 minutes. So for those of us that are stuck, can we agree that that's what we're looking for, everybody? For those of us that are stuck, can we agree that we're looking for how many words? in 20 minutes. So blank or W or X words in 20 minutes, just making sure that we're good there. All right, great. Now, here it says, Tony types his letter to Santa. What's up, Tony? So Tony types his letter to Santa at a rate of 65 words. Okay, right there. So highlight that green. 65 words right here. And then in and then it says 65 words per minute. So everybody, what does that mean? How many minutes is that? How many minutes is that? If it says per minute, what does that mean? I, I feel like that's the confusing part, right? That's definitely the confusing part. But what is the word per minute? Same thing as per hour or per person. Think about it. If we think about going to the convenience store and it says, oh, it's the beginning of the pandemic. And we are limiting two hand sanitizer bottles per person. How many people at a time can get two hand sanitizer bottles? Right, one person. When we use the word per whatever, per minute, per hour, per person, we're talking about just one of those things. Yes or no, everybody, does that make sense? The phrase here, per minute, 
means per one minute. Again, the word minute is singular. It's not S, plural, minutes. No, it's just minute. And so that would be one minute. Again, I really want to make sure that we understand that uh, before we move forward here with this. So once we understand that, everybody, for those of us that were stuck, was that what you were stuck on? What per minute meant? Just want to yeah, be honest, be honest, be completely honest. That's all I'm looking for. Great, sweet, sounds good. So someone asked in the chat box, and this is a pretty interesting question, and I want to give you guys the opportunity to answer this really quick. So Jalen and Jose, if you could put your hands down for just one moment, I'm going to have you put them back up in a second. But if you all could put your hands down for a moment, the question was, how come we're not using 60 seconds? Why are we using one minute instead of 60 seconds? So go ahead and raise your hand if you'd like to answer that question. Oh, Jalen gives his hand up like, I got this. <laughs> So Jose, I want to give you the, I want, cause Jose hasn't answered a question yet. I want to give Jose the chance first, Jalen, Muhammad, don't kill me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jose first. Hey Try coach. Well, the, the reason this one I knew right away, isn't this like a distance times and rate? It can be considered that it can absolutely be considered that. Cause that's how I did it. No, 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 David, it can absolutely be considered a distance rate time problem, but that you're not answering the question. The question okay. was, why are we using one minute instead of 60 seconds? One minute instead of 60 seconds? Yeah. Because you're supposed to uh, divide by one because you're supposed to consider it by one. Or like, I mean, not divide, but you're supposed to multiply it by one and then divide Jose, by... what's I mean, the main idea the... of proportions? What is the main idea of proportions? It's the same way, the same thing. No, nope. come on, say it, say, it, say it right, say it fully. Look at your notes. Compare the same things... The same way. Exactly. Compare the same things in the same way. So allow me to do this. Let me take away the one minute. Everybody, it's true that one minute is 60 seconds, right? Yeah. One, one minute is 60 seconds, right? So technically, could I write 60 seconds right there in place of one minute? I could, but would it make the setup correct? No, because we're not comparing the same things in the same way. Jose, what we would have here is that, look, you had W words in 20 minutes 65 words in 60 seconds not comparing the same thing in the same way and so because of that you have to go ahead hit that back key and bring that one minute back you got to compare words to minutes words to minutes not words to minutes and words to seconds not the same comparison so i want to make sure everybody understands that do we understand that everybody we are using minutes to uh, words and minutes, words and minutes. Sweet. Want to make sure we cover that. So now let's go ahead and cover the setup here. We can set this up a few different ways. Here's just one way to solve it. We can do W over 20 equals 65 over one. The great thing about this problem here, everybody, is that once you go ahead and cross multiply, you don't have to divide. You're actually done. You're actually just done. Because right over here, everybody, what's one times W? What's another way to write one times W? Write one W. And what's another way to write one W? That's just W, exactly. That is just W. That is just W. And so over here, 20 times 65, once you figure out what that is, you're good. You're good. So here's one way you can go ahead and multiply by two digits without really multiplying by two digits. I can do 65 times 20. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save that zero right there. I'm just gonna save it. Watch this, everybody. Five times two, I'm just gonna go ahead and just ignore it. Five times two is gonna be 10. Six times two is gonna be 12, plus one is going to go ahead and be 13. And then I will just go ahead and take my zero, move it on down. My answer is 1,300. That's a little bit of mental math that you could apply here. Not very necessary, not even, you will save a little bit of time, maybe one or two seconds. Um, but really, yeah, you could solve that nice and easy. But again, my, my most stressed thing about this really is the setup, everybody. It really is the setup. So everybody, yes or no, does the setup make sense here? Yes, the answer is C, 1300, but I really care more about the setup. 
We are comparing W words to 20 minutes right there, 65 to one. And if you were thinking that, hey, did anybody here immediately just look at this and say, well, if you do 65 in one minute to get 20 minutes, you just multiply by 20. Did anybody think that right away and do that right away? Good. Good. If you did that and thought that right away, you're in a pretty good spot. You understand rates pretty well. This is technically a rate problem, but could also be seen as a proportion problem. Yeah, on this one specifically, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on this one specifically, because you're given the rate, 65 words per minute. That is a solid rate. And so you were able to do that in that way. So you just multiply the rate times time, 65 times 20, and you got the answer. Yeah. Would 65 over one equals W over 20 work? Yeah, it's the same thing. One plus one equals two, two equals one plus one. Same thing, you could flip it, works out just the same, Ashley. Good question though, good question. Yeah, 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 you're good, yeah, you're good. You're absolutely good. The distance would be the 1300 words. Remember, David, the, the distance is whatever you're trying to achieve. That's what distance is in distance rate time. So you are achieving 1300 words. The rate at which you're achieving it is 65 words a minute. And the time it takes you is 20 minutes. Let me know if that makes sense, man. Yeah. Again, remember, distance is not just travel, like traveling distance. No, it's whatever you're trying to accomplish. All right. So let's take a look at, well, let's take a look at another one here. I'm going to switch it up on y'all. I'm going to give us one from the bottom here. Go ahead, number 23. Go ahead and try it out here. I'm gonna go ahead and give you 23. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give y'all uh three questions back to back. So go ahead. All I really care about is the setup. Okay, I'm gonna give you two minutes here. I don't care about the actual solution, I just care about the setup because we will be able to do the math here and solve it for sure. But I want to give you two minutes on each one just for the setup. Uh, Brian, that's what the program is for, because in the program, you can follow up on any class and do extra practice problems. Um, you can go ahead and watch more extra video solutions, worksheets and things like that. So you definitely have the opportunity to, to, to follow up on that for sure. And if you need help following up on that, I'm more than happy to with you. But everything is going to be in the, uh, in the study guide. So in the study guide, you have all that lined up for you for sure. So remember, gang, if you are stuck, again, I don't want to lose your hope here. I want you guys to really focus in. So if we're taking a look here, go to the question, at this rate, how many days? That's what you're looking for right there. How many days? Very clear. Will it take to sell 96 sleds? So use that to your advantage here, everybody. Use that to your advantage and see if you can come up with the right setup here. Try it out. Uh, Brian, studying before uh, off your notes, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just refreshing. I mean, unless you're studying for the first time off of it, then obviously, you know, it's like that's cramming. But if you're just going in just to remember like one formula or, you know, a couple formulas like, okay, A squared plus B squared plus C squared, C squared is the hypotenuse. Cool. Like just refreshing. Yeah, for sure. Take whose test? Let's go ahead. Let me show you all off because I love having over 140 people in class. Hey, hey, it's Coach Anderson. Really quick before we continue the video, I have to ask a favor. Please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. That way we can reach more people just like you trying to succeed with these free videos. You know, we're proud to do it and you can be part of the success with us. Please and thank you. Go ahead and subscribe and let's keep acing the ASVAB. Back to the video. All right, so time is up, my party people. Time is up. Go ahead and type out your setup if you have one. Type out your proportion setup if you have one. And if you have an answer, go ahead and type the answer with your setup. But I want everybody to give me their setup. I really do want to see it there. I really do. I do really do want to see it. 
Okay, so I'm going to take a quick brief moment to go over the setup, and I want to jump into another problem because we're going to go over three problems here, and we'll circle back to solve everything and do our job here. But um, one of the proper setups here would be this. 96 sleds, how many days? So we can say blank or D days to sell 96 sleds. So then if we come back up here, we see that we sold 16 sleds. So I'm gonna type, I'm gonna write that right over here, 16 sleds. And then we have five days. Five days right there. And so there we go. And so the setup, the appropriate setup, you could have D over 96 equals five over 16. That's one way that works or any other variation, as long as you're comparing days and sleds the same way. As long as you're comparing days and sleds the same way, you're fine, you're fine, you are fine. So I wanna go ahead, don't worry guys, we are gonna come back and I actually am gonna solve the proportions because I do wanna focus on, on that some uh, as well, but I wanna focus on three problems back to back with the setups, then we'll come back to these same problems and actually solve them. Everybody cool with that? Yes or no? We're gonna work on three problems back to back for the setup, then we'll circle back and solve all three. That should be enough time to go through uh, to the end of class. So let me go ahead and get this next one here. Right here. So again, just pay attention to what you're looking for. Just go ahead and do your job here the right way. And there's the timer. All right, be right back. I'm going to get some water. But go ahead and work on it. Exactly, Latifa. Right, right setup equals right answer. Oh, Felix, we're going to come back and solve it and show you the answer. Don't worry. We'll be right back. So, everybody, in, in this problem here, do we ever see the word total in the problem? Yes or no? Do we see the word total in the problem? Like, if we were to read it out, you know, Albert's punch recipe, uh, I don't see anywhere that says total, right? The word total doesn't appear. But let me go ahead and show you how you can still figure out that this is indeed a total problem. You know, I can't have y'all, I can't have y'all always believing that the ASVAB is going to serve it to you with puppies and sunshine saying, here's a total problem. Like, it's not going to do that. It, it's going to really depend on you recognizing that it's total. So here you go. Watch this, everybody. What are we looking for, everybody? What is the question having us figure out? What do we need? Exactly, Tori. Exactly. So what are we looking for, though? We're looking for pineapple juice. Exactly. So right here, how much pineapple juice will he need? So what I'm going to go ahead to start off by saying is this. We have blank pineapple juice. So we can say blank cups right here, cups of pineapple juice. All right, sounds good. Sweet. So now what we're gonna do here is see what that's being compared to. Now, if you explore here, what we have is it says, Albert's punch recipe calls for four cups of Sprite and 10 cups of pineapple juice. Okay. It says 10 cups of Sprite, or excuse me, four cups of Sprite. So I'll go ahead and use green for Sprite. And then it says to 10 cups of pineapple juice. Everybody, would it be appropriate if I use blue here for pineapple juice, right? Because again, it's still the same right here. Blue for pineapple juice, blue for pineapple juice. We're still good. We're still good. So we'll say 10 cups of pineapple juice, PJ, pineapple juice. So with that said, mm, there's one piece of information we kind of forgot here. He needs 105 cups of punch for his holiday party. How much pineapple juice will he need? Everybody, is it fair to say that to make the 105 cups of punch, you need a certain amount of pineapple juice. Is that fair to say? 
this unknown number of cups of pineapple juice is connected to the 105 cups of punch. Yes or no, is that fair to say? Cool. I'm glad that that's fair to say because they're saying, hey, we want to make 105 cups of punch. How much pineapple juice do we need for that? That's the comparison. The cups of pineapple juice to the cups of punch. But here's the problem. If I were to try to use green here, would that work? Because we said that four cups of Sprite is in green. And then we have 105 cups of punch in green. Can't do that. Got to have its own color. Got to have its own color here. 105 cups of punch right there. So we will say blank, or we can just say C cups right here. C cups of pineapple juice to 10, or excuse me, 105 cups of punch. Who here recognizes the total? And at the same time, who here recognizes the problem? Because here we're comparing cups of pineapple juice to punch. Then on the other one, on the bottom, four cups of Sprite, 10 cups of pineapple juice. Hmm. Something's not really adding up, right? If you're confused right now, good. Good, because you should be. You should be confused because if you look at this, you're not comparing the same things in the same way. You got cups of pineapple juice to punch, Sprite to pineapple juice. First of all, let me at least, let me at least swap these out. Let me at least swap these out so that way I got pineapple juice and pineapple juice on the same starting point, right? At the very least, let me do that. But the big problem, the big lie right now is that we got these two right here. So here's what we're going to do, everybody. Let's ask ourselves a very sincere question. In this problem, how is it that we're supposed to create the punch? What do we mix together to make the punch here? David says, add, add what? Be specific. Not four in the 10. Be specific. How do we get the punch? How do we get the punch? The punch equals what? Exactly. The punch equals the Sprite plus the pineapple juice. The Sprite plus the pineapple juice. Don't ask me what kind of punch this is. I did not try it. So we have punch equals Sprite plus pineapple juice. There it is. So the reason that I know that it's supposed to be added together, the reason that I know is because of the first sentence. Albert's punch recipe calls for four cups of Sprite and 10 cups of pineapple juice. So basically when you make a recipe, it is implied that you are mixing those ingredients together to get the result. I think that's, that's okay, that's fair to say, that's not too far out there. It's a very fair implication here. It's fair to say, that if a recipe says you need sugar and salt, well, then the sugar and the salt are thrown together in some recipe to create what you want. That's fair to say. So here, when they say that the recipe calls for Sprite and uh, pineapple juice, it is a fair assumption that you will add those together. Notice how they did not say total. They did not say total here. And either way, we still found out that it's a total problem. And so here, we need to rethink this. We need to rethink this because we cannot have four cups of Sprite there. Everybody, what number actually belongs here? It should be 14. And it's okay with the internet, don't worry. But that's gonna be 14. That's gonna be 14. Because again, if you have, let me just take this again here. Let me just allow me to replace this. This is going to make a little more sense for those of us that are still confused. I got you. So right here, if we have punch plus Sprite equals pineapple juice, we got four cups of Sprite and 10 cups of pineapple juice. Together, that's going to make 14. Together, that makes 14. And that's how we get that number. And so our proper setup, one of the proper setups, again, Tony, we get 14 by adding the four cups of Sprite and the 10 cups of pineapple juice. So one of the proper setups would be C over 105 equals uh, 10 
over 14. And that's how we would get the answer. That's how we would get it. That's how we would get it. And so, um, you know, then you can solve that and we'll come right back to this. But first, we're going to do another problem here. And I believe we can do one more here. And then uh, we'll see. I will give you all a minute and a half for this one. And then we'll kind of show us a little quick little shortcut on it. So here we go. Timer's up. Let's go. Left, I want to go ahead and show you here that there's a faster way to do this. So just kind of check this out here. If we have two hours and eight hours, 25 boxes, how many boxes? You can use mental math here and look at this and say, yo, we're already comparing the same things in the same way. This is a proportion. We have boxes with hours, boxes with hours. So what I'm gonna do is notice this. You can use some mental math. Everybody, quick question. How do you go from two hours to eight hours? What kind of a scale is that? How much more time is that? That's times four, exactly. You are doing four times the amount of work, four times the amount of time. And so if that's times four right there, you can go from the 25 boxes to the how many boxes times four. Everybody, what's 25 times four? Bingo, that's gonna be 100. So you can get this answer pretty quickly. Has anybody here ever noticed a problem like this before in the ASVAB or a practice test? That it is a proportion problem, but these, honestly, by the time I'm done with you and teaching you and helping you build this confidence, these are the types of problems that you won't even put your pencil on paper for. You'll look at this and you'll say, okay, how many boxes in eight hours? Okay, so we want boxes in eight hours. We got 25 boxes in two hours, okay. If we want to go from two hours to eight hours times four, 25 times four, 100, done. You can absolutely do it that way, absolutely. Um, so it's really just a matter of getting enough practice to that point, but I really want to encourage you to, again, keep looking forward and keep picking apart those little things and get used to it little by little. At first, it's always gonna to seem tough, but the more practice you get, the easier it does get, for sure. That's all good, David. Yeah, David, if you want to write it down, sure. But there's going to be a point where there's no point in checking your work if you're that adept at it. So, for example, what I'm saying is, David, if I were to ask you, you know, what four plus three is, your reply would be seven. Hopefully your reply would be seven. But you're not going to sit there and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You don't do that anymore, do you? You don't. I know you don't. And that's the point I'm trying to make. When it comes to these more fundamental, more basic problems, and I don't want to say basic like easy, but I mean basic like these are your standard problems. Those standard problems you would be able to crush and not even hesitate about it. You wouldn't want to check your work because you know you got it right. Same thing with the four plus three thing. So I just want to kind of uh, you know express that there for you, boss. So if you wanted to set this up as a proportion, one way it would look would be boxes over eight equals 25 over two. You solve that nice and easy and you'll still get 100. So let's go ahead and go to the other two problems and then call it a day here. I got y'all, I got y'all. So here we go. Let's solve this one here. Let's solve this one. Let's solve this one. So um, yeah, for sure you're allowed to ask for scratch paper. I would ask for it before you start to say, hey, I'm gonna need at least two or three pages, please and thank you. Um, so here, this one. So to get the, whoa, what the heck? <laughs> Let me go ahead and just skip over here. So here, so for this problem where we were talking about the sleds, um, again, you are more than happy to do the cross multiplication and division technique if you'd like to, really completely up to you. Um, I believe through mental math, the answer here would be 30 um, for the simple reason being that this is a time six relationship. But let me just kind of show you this in a way that the majority of us would, would be able to see. So again, one way is to do it like this and you'll get 16D equals that would be 480. Then you would divide both sides by 16. 
and you get D equals 30. That's the main way that this would work out. That is the main way that this would work out. Now, the other way that this could work out for you would be is if you notice some comparisons. So here's what I mean. One comparison that you can try is a left to right simplification. Everybody, we all know that with fractions, you can simplify up down, but you can also simplify left to right. So here's what I mean, everybody. If I can divide this denominator by eight, I should have to divide this denominator by eight. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. So everybody riddle me this. What is 16 divided by eight gonna be? Help me out. What is 16 divided by eight gonna be? It's gonna be two. 16 divided by two is gonna be, or 16 divided by eight is gonna be two. Now help me out over here. Everybody, what's 96 divided by eight? That one should be very clear if you know your multiplication tables. 96 divided by eight is 12. 96 divided by eight is 12. Eight times 10 is 80. Eight times 11 is 88. Eight times 12 is 96. That's gonna be 12. Now, once I'm here, this is where things get really, really easy. Because once you make that one step in that simplification, notice how you can go ahead and do 12, two to 12, that's times six. Five to the answer will be times six. And you can get it like that as well if you would have liked to. So everybody, which way do you prefer for this one here? Method one or method two? Which one was your preference for this one? Because you notice both of those were the same amount of work. Look at this, same amount of work. One was cross multiplication, then division, two steps. This one here, a simplification, then multiplication. Divide by eight times six or 96 times five, then 480 divided by 16. Like, I hope you can see that with these techniques, you can deal in a much faster way because you're dealing with simpler numbers. That's the mental math way. It's about basically adding on one or two more steps, but all of the steps are easy as opposed to one or two massive steps that you don't wanna do. That's the purpose. So now lastly over here, I believe we have one more. Yeah, so the, the, uh, the punch and the pineapple and the Sprite problem. So what we can do here is we can go ahead and solve this cross multiplication and division if you would have wanted to if you would have wanted to. So that's 14C equals 1,050. And then from there, you would go ahead and you know divide both sides by 14. And so I'm looking at that and then you gotta go ahead and do your work. And then you have to go ahead and take 14 and take it into 105 or 1,050. So if you look at that, that's not very favorable. That's a lot of work. That is a lot of work. So I'm gonna let anybody who wants to torture themselves with that, torture themselves. If you're a masochist, great, sounds good. But let me go ahead and show you the other way here. This way is gonna be just again, still a little simpler here. What you can do is you can notice that, hey, 10 and 14, everybody 10 and 14 are both divisible by what? 10 and 14 are both divisible by two. So right there and right there. And so from there, that turns into, C over 105 equals five over seven. And then from here, you're looking at this and you're saying, well, how do I go from seven to 105? And this is where you need to know a little bit of mental math because 105, everybody is 70 plus 35. Everybody, true or false? 105 is 70 plus 35. It's true. 105 is 70 plus 35. 70 divided by seven, that's 10. 35 divided by seven is five. So I can tell you right now, this is a times 15 relationship. This is times 15. And again, this only works if you know your mental math. This is a harder version. So if you don't get this right now, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. You can get here. You can absolutely get here. And so from there, five to C, the answer will be times 15 some mental math, five times 10 is 50, five times five is 25, 
50 plus 25 is 75. C equals 75. That's much faster if you know your mental math than trying to divide 1,050 by 14, which will take a lot longer no matter what.